I was invited by my painting hero to travel to Europe from America to participate in not only a two day long private coaching, but also to attend and compete in what may be our hobby's most prestigious art show in the northern mountains of Italy. This is what you'd call a once in a lifetime opportunity and I almost ruined it for myself. This is Roman Lapat, the guy who invited me. He's a heavily decorated miniature painter, and chief amongst those accolades is the Slayer Sword he was awarded for his piece, The Last Light, which he irreverently stores in his heater. Nice. <laughs> If you're not familiar, the Slayer Sword represents getting best in show at a Golden Demon event that has hundreds upon hundreds of entries. There can only be one. On September 21st, 2022, over a year ago, I got a message from Roman. I read the message and it went something like this. I made up my mind and wanted to let you know. I see you as one of the coolest miniature painting dudes on YouTube and also someone who has his heart in the right spot when it comes to passion. Um, have I died and gone to mini painting heaven? I wanna help you step up your game and help you sort your toolbox and knowledge. When is your birthday? I help not far away as I have a gift for you, a two-day private coaching in my hometown studio with an invitation to stay at my house for a week to paint together free of charge. Uh, uh, um, are you sure you're talking to me and not the person that's sitting behind me? Me? P.S. Maybe we can combine the coaching together with a trip to Monte San Savino in Italy? So you're saying that all I have to do is pay for a plane ticket and I get 48 hours of coaching from one of the industry's leading professionals and my personal hobby hero, and I get to travel with that person to an amazing art show sequestered in the mountains of Northern Italy? You know, I'm a little busy right now. Are you fucking kidding me? Of course I'm coming. I packed up a model to paint for the coaching and grabbed a few paintbrushes and headed to Germany and met my hero. But why is Roman my hero? The mini painting world is a very rigid and technique focused art. There are a lot of correct ways to do things, products to compare and models to collect. Roman just doesn't seem to care at all about what the expectations of the hobby world are. He paints for what seems like his exclusive enjoyment. I find that in many walks of life, I am often shaping what I do based on the expectations of friends, my wife, my viewers here on YouTube, etc. But the problem with that is that every time you say yes to someone else, you're saying no to yourself. I wanna say no less to myself, and it seems like Roman lives his hobby life like that, and I wanna learn how to do that. For mini painting, not my marriage. Roman isn't that good, or is he? Meeting my hobby hero was awesome. Sometimes you form an image in your head of how someone is going to be when you first meet them. If it's someone you admire, you probably hope that they treat you like a friend or have the same humor as you or relate on various opinions. And all of that happened, like all of it. On day one, I was gifted a beautiful art book, stickers, postcards, and a Bavarian soft pretzel that was lightly crispy on the outside and filled with butter on the inside. 10 out of 10. I also got to breathe in the air of his home studio. You know how some people think that New York water makes great pizza dough? Well, German air probably can't hurt my chances of becoming a Slayer Zorg winner as well. His studio was an altar to the miniature painting world. You couldn't look somewhere and not see an amazing piece of art or inspirational material. The next morning saw the coaching beginning in earnest with a primer on color theory. We worked with cyan, magenta, and yellow and mixed secondaries and tertiaries from them. I learned about chromatic gray, an equal mixture of all the primaries versus neutral gray, an equal mixture of white and black. On the surface, they look the same, but neutral gray aggressively desaturates your colors when mixed in, whereas chromatic gray does so much more slowly. I learned about the paints that everyone uses to mix their highlights like sunny skin tone and ice yellow and what makes them special the small inclusion of fluorescent paint to give them an extra bit of glow. That's helpful if you ever want to mix your own highlight colors. Day one was a flurry of technical color knowledge, trying to match colors from other ranges with only primaries. And the more I learned, 
And the more I absorbed, the more I got in my own head. You didn't pay you didn't to be pay. here. You didn't there are some emails you really should respond to. There's a wait list of over 40 students and you couldn't the line. Uh, when are you publishing that video? Your videos don't even like American. The footage you're capturing now has no student out next to the keyboard. My head was racing with thoughts of imposter syndrome, of other work that I needed to be doing, and the feeling of being lost. I was everywhere other than where I needed to be, which was in an art studio in Augsburg, Germany, making the most of this rare educational opportunity. After a long 10-hour day of learning, I went back to Roman's house and tried to take care of my headspace. I addressed the work that needed to be done, and I began the work of accepting the grace that was given to me. When I was just getting started as a YouTuber, I made 10 beginner-focused technique videos that I organized into a playlist that you can still see on YouTube to this day. I sent this playlist to a number of blogs that were popular at the time. The only blog that not only responded to me, but also ended up publishing an article about my playlist was the Massive Voodoo blog, the site run by Roman. The fact that someone took time to see my request, reply to it, identify the value I was trying to add to the community, and then support it meant the world to me. The fact that this was someone that I admired and was inspired by meant everything to me. I spend a lot of time in my head wondering if the contributions I make, not only on YouTube, but everywhere in life, are what they seem like in my thoughts. Are these videos helpful and high quality enough? Am I being a considerate friend? As someone with a healthy ego, the default answer to those questions is always yes, of course. As a 31-year-old who is beginning the process of maturity, I'm beginning to understand that not everything is always as it seems. I look to outside validation that the thoughts I'm forming in my head are also shared by others, and that can be unhealthy. Often high viewership on a video will fire synapses in my brain that suggest, oh, this video is valuable, and a low view count means that I'm way off base. When that validation comes from someone you look up to, a known quantity versus an ambiguous number that's partially dictated by software outside of my control, well, that can be really affirming, and this was one of those moments. These contributions I'm making are valuable enough for Roman to notice and share them, which means they must have value outside of my own opinion. Here we are now with me in his literal home, heading into day two of a private coaching that he invited me to. I think I deserve to be here. God didn't strike me dead yet? Yeah. I deserve to be here. Before moving on, let's hear a brief word from this video's sponsor. Chimera just launched a bunch of new products on their website, most notably a range of new Kalinsky sable hair brushes. They have solid round brushes that many hobbyists are familiar with, but they also have a new aero brush profile. In one orientation, this brush is as sharp as any round brush, and in the other orientation, it's wider and more suited to base coating and applying softer layers, allowing it to be multi-purpose. The additional hairs also create a stiffer brush that allows for more accuracy while painting, and it's always been my preference when it comes to picking out a paintbrush. You can pick up the brushes and soap together at a discounted price, and the collection comes with a booklet explaining best practices for how to use the brushes and why they were designed this way in the first place. I appreciate that Chimera is trying to be innovative in this space with these new brush designs. In addition, they've also created a very large brush designed to be used as a miniature duster to remove dust from models while also not scratching the paint. I've been using these brushes to paint my models for the last month and also use them at my private coaching with Roman. They've held up super well and I've never felt held back, which is my number one concern for any tool. Along with the brushes, we're also seeing two new signature Chimera paint sets, this time from Robert Carlson and Fabrizio Russo, two awesome display model painters. The sets come with an instructional booklet describing how the artist likes to use the included colors. Lastly, they've released several new models, Maeve, a beautiful 200 millimeter bust being one of them. If you wanna practice skin tones and also paint a wonderful model, this is a great option. Thank you to Chimera for sponsoring this episode. You can find all the products linked in the description below. All right, back to the video.
With a healthier mindset, we moved into day two. And this is when we really started to paint the model that I brought and began to employ the tools and knowledge that we learned on day one. I painted the Ghoul Queen environmentally, which practically means that I have a common shadow color and a common highlight color that's affecting all the tones in my palette. But it goes beyond that. It took a bit longer for me to paint my bust because the figure was so large and I ultimately only finished up the face. But I tried something different than my normal approach. Instead of an entirely zenithal light source or one that's above the character, I chose a light source that was above and in front of her, almost like a spotlight. This harsher and more illuminating light really makes the character look strong and confident. And to me, the Goo Queen oozes confidence. It's been a long time since I've invested in my own personal miniature painting education. Several years ago, I'd voraciously eat up videos about technique, blog posts about the creation of awesome dioramas, and more. Lately, however, I've kind of just been floating, painting in a style that I find comfortable. There is some instability in my life at the moment, so the thought of challenging myself intentionally was out of the picture. There's nothing wrong with operating in your comfort zone, but if you want to improve, and I do, you have to move out eventually. It was awesome to hear not only Roman's painting theory, but also the practical application of that theory. So many great miniature painters are also not great teachers, but luckily for me, Roman is definitely a great teacher. With the coaching complete, Roman, myself, and another super talented hobbyist, Johannes, drove to Northern Italy the morning after. I say we drove, but in reality, Johannes was the only one to drive the entire nine hour voyage. Absolute champion. It was so cool to drive through the Alps. There were castles littered in the mountains, and as an American Midwesterner, it's always awesome to see something other than endless cornfields and forests. The first day of Monte San Savina was a little rainy, but that didn't cast a shadow over the event for me. What I was first struck by was the layout where miniature painting conventions are often inside large and clinical event centers, this show was at the center of a small sequestered mountain village and the buildings were historical. Hidden in the backdrop behind painters huddled together examining great works of art from 2023 or great works of art from much earlier than that. It was more than the literal art of the place though. It was the bricks, the stones, the small winding streets, the curious onlookers, and the sole food vendor that occupied the streets making sandwiches during lunch hour, where the whole town, including the event, just stops to take a break to eat. It was as if the town of Monte San Savino was embodying the lesson I learned during my coaching with Roman. Be present here and now. Enjoy all these details that are unique. The whole vibe was way more down to earth than any of my prior show experiences. It wasn't better than them. It was just different, and different is good. You wanna know the most amazing part of Monty though? The miniatures. Never have I been personally exposed to such breadth of creativity in our hobby. You know, earlier I said that the miniature painting world can be a little legalistic. Well, here, there are no rules. Even the way the categories were broken down was looser. There was no single figure fantasy or fantasy unit, fantasy diorama. 
Fantasy painting was a category that focused more on the technical aspects of painting, whereas open fantasy entrance focused on other elements of the art form. And it's intentionally ambiguous. To say this experience was inspiring would be misrepresenting how I felt. It knocked down metaphorical walls. It opened my mind to the idea that I enjoy a very specific type of this hobby, but there are other fields of expertise that are cool and different and unexplored for me. I also got to rub elbows with some of the best artists in our industry and talk about the hobby with them. I got to give feedback and receive feedback, and I even entered two pieces in standard fantasy painting and got a gold for them. The socializing aspect of Monty was huge. I grew up seeing pictures of artists that I idolized sharing an amazing meal and an exclusive event and thought, damn, I'll never be there. Even though I literally am here now, I'll be honest, despite some mental reconciliation at Romans, the feeling of not belonging still crops up. I didn't just magically solve it for myself, but I'm here now. And you know what? No one treated me differently for being a YouTuber and not necessarily a box artist painter. No one looked down on me for being an American. They treated me like family. I shared meals and had excellent conversation with great artists. It was worth it, and if you can make it out to Monte San Savino, I can't recommend it enough. You don't need an exclusive invitation from mini painting royalty. The event is there for everyone to enjoy, and enjoy it, I did. A huge shout out to Roman for being the best host, teacher, and friend that I could have imagined. At some point, Roman stole my camera and filmed something, and I haven't yet watched it even at this point in the video, so let's watch it together. Hello, 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 test, test, test. Hey, I'm Roman, and I want to tell you a little bit. Hey, I'm Roman, and this is actually a video by Scott, and I just wanted to talk with you a little bit about what I think. For me, the circle closes a little bit, also for Scott. Um, I remember back, I think it was 2010 or 11 or something, or 12, he was asking around in the miniature community to find somebody who pushes a little bit and talks about his channel. And I, I did that, um, I supported him there, and it's really great to see how big this grew, and um, it's really lovely. Yeah, that's, that's from my part, and for me it really um, is a wonderful experience to finally have met you, Scott, in real life. Um, yeah, it's such a pleasure also being so honest and open and talking like old-time friends with each other. I hope you enjoyed your trip here, everything um, over here that you experienced, and I hope to see you again. I also hope to see Amber coming with you, and yeah, arigato for coming over. That's me, I'm out, bye-bye, keep on happy painting. If you guys enjoyed this video and would like to support the future creation of more videos, consider supporting me and this channel. Right now we have a Black Friday deal going on with a site-wide discount over at miniac.co. Pick up a thick double-sided cutting mat. It's got an imperial grid on one side and a metric grid on the other and it's self-healing. It's got cool art on both sides as well. Grab this red and black tie-dye hoodie with a nice little design there and a huge back design on the back as well and many other things on my store that are on discount right now. Happy holidays. Thank you for watching and enjoying the video. Hopefully it was at least a little bit educational and helpful for you to watch or at the very least interesting. Subscribe or die! And most importantly, don't forget to... Hey, man,